Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now please join with me in proclaiming the Gloria. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace, goodwill towards all. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now have the reading of the lessons. A reading from Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, ah, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6, found on page 683 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please join me in reading this together. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. The second reading is a reading from 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, 
And if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now hope, faith, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will quote me quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself, and you, will, and you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things we have heard you did in Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him to the bow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. Let us pray. Lord God, you have, made, you have known us since before our creation, and you have formed us in your image and called us your beloved. We give you thanks for your abiding presence with us. We ask that you give us courage and wisdom to live out the good news of your son, Jesus Christ. May our lives be a testimony to your love. Amen. So when was the last time that you were confronted with doing something that you didn't think you could do? What was that impossible task that your subconscious was saying, Nah, you're never gonna manage it. You know you can't do that. It's way, way, way beyond your capability. Anybody except me ever experienced anything like that? 
I suspect so. I remember the first time I was challenged to jump off the high diving board in swim class. Now, I don't have any idea how old I was, but I was pretty sure as I walked out to the edge of that platform and my toes curled over the edge, I was going to die. I remember in the sixth grade when I secretly really really, really wanted to run track, but it wasn't for girls. But my father, who was a man of a singular mind and smooth of tongue, I put that politely, he secured the right for me to run with the boys, but not really, because the only way I was allowed to run was if I stayed off the track and ran around the edge. I knew that everybody would laugh at me because I was the only girl. And indeed they did. I came out of the school and people were laughing. I walked up to the start line and people began to boo and hiss. And I had to run on the outside of the track. And they laughed all the way around until I came across the finish line first. My first time up on the debate team, <laughs> I, I felt so unsure and inadequate. I went to the school bathroom and I threw up. I was so scared. I couldn't do this. I knew I couldn't do it. Why did they ask me to? And here's another confession. On Saturday nights, before I'm scheduled to preach the next day, I don't sleep so much. I still feel inadequate. And yet God called. I suspect that all of us have had these moments when faced with a task or challenge, and we at, the least, at least internally we say, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Find somebody else. Someone else can do that better than I can. I can't do that. And if you're a person like me, um, who's quite vocal and opinionated and stubborn, you might even say, hmm, well, forgive my language. Hell no, I'm not going to do that. Our friendly prophet, Jeremiah. You know, I love Jeremiah and I love Peter because they, they are people of, well, let's just say opinions. Was having such a reaction to God's call to him to go out and be God's spokesperson. Jeremiah is part of a long, long lineage of prophets called by God to speak to God's people. He was born during the reign of King Josiah, who was a wonderful boy king who attempted to recover and implement religious reforms. But upon Josiah's death, two kings who succeeded him turned the people away from worshiping Yahweh. Eventually, the Israelites were taken into Babylonian cap captivity, and it is into this set of circumstances that we find God calling Jeremiah to speak on God's behalf. God comes to Jeremiah and identifies how God knows him. God says to Jeremiah, I formed you. I knew you. This is not just this. This is this. I consecrated you and I appointed you. Sounds like God knew Jeremiah pretty well, didn't he? Yet Jeremiah cannot imagine that he can serve God. He just can't get his head around it. And why, why is it that he can't, what does he say to God? Well, he doesn't say maybe what I would have said, but he says, I don't know how to speak. That's his one excuse. His second excuse is he's too young. I don't know, God, I can't do this. So um, just to let you know, in case you don't, I don't know how to speak. Don't, I'm not soft of tongue and I'm just too young. 
Well, I saw a report on CBS News Friday night that made me think about Jeremiah and his hesitancy to say yes to God. It also made me stop and consider those times when I didn't think I could do something and my own resistance when God comes calling. It's a story about 11-year-old Juliana Demma of Freehold, New Jersey. After her cousin was diagnosed with cancer at 10 months old, Juliana, having been to visit her cousin in the hospital, noticed that all the children were wearing gowns that were drab and colorless, as bad as their diagnoses. I was thinking that maybe I could sew gowns for kids like her that have cancer, Juliana told the news people. So she didn't know how to sew. So she learned to sew two years ago, and she hasn't stopped making cheerful gowns since, calling her operation G's Giving Gowns. She said she sews for two to three hours a day after school because, quote, I feel like this is way more important than other things I could potentially do. So far, she's donated 170 gowns to children across the country. They get to select the design. Requests so far are things like with fabrics like Disney characters and sports teams logos and koalas and Harry Potter designs. Her operation has grown so big that people voluntarily pay for the fabric for her to be able to sew. Her passion is so contagious, she's even inspired friends to ask for sewing machines as Christmas gifts, and now they're up to sewing hospital gowns together. Juliana Dema has recruited her friends to sew these gowns for young patients. One of her friends says, she's really a good teacher. And it's really, really cool that we can help these little kids. It just makes me know that all my hard work making the gowns pays off, Juliana says. She didn't even know how to sew when she began this project. But she believed it needed to be done, and so she stepped out and she stepped up to do what needed to be done. She determined that she was neither too young nor too inexperienced to make a difference. When, we call, when God calls us, we, we can receive the same assurance that was given to Jeremiah, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for I am with you to deliver you. God's call is always, always accompanied by God's presence. We are not to ex expect it to live godly lives on our own, but with God's help, remember, as Episcopalians, remember the promises that we recite, our baptismal promises, after each promise, we acknowledge that our work will be done not by ourselves, but with God's help. Jeremiah was able to fulfill his mission as prophet only because of God's saving presence. It is with God's grace that we can live out the mission, the tasks appointed to you and I by God. We come together on this particular weekend in person, me and Everett, and on Zoom, all of y'all, as, as St. Gabriel's Church family. We, you and I, all of us, have been formed. We have been consecrated. And we have been appointed. We have been appointed to do God's work, to speak God's message, to be God's people in this community. Each and every person in this parish has a call. Each has a gift. And all of us are commanded to use those gifts and talents to share the love of Jesus Christ. 
And if we question that call, we can turn to God and humbly ask that God show us what we are to be and what we are to do as God's beloved. In my short time here with you, over and over I witness here, people claiming their calls by God, calls to learn and to pray together through book groups and Bible study, in an exciting and energizing Sunday school, whether it's in person or on Zoom, calls to work not only in our church community, but outside the church with the hungry and the homeless through the Beaverton Resource Center, through clothes for kids and our own kids on a shopping trip to purchase items for kids their own age, for what's going on at PCC. Calls to work with the finances of the church through our finance committee and treasurer. Calls to tend to the worship of the congregation through lectors and acolytes and altar guild members and our te technology team and our wonderful music ministry. We witness calls to care for the church's physical facility. We give thanks and glory to God for this place, this place that we call our spiritual home. Your vestry and wardens have said yes, yes to God's call to be leaders in the parish. Parish secretary brings her gifts, sharing them and strengthening the various ministries of this church. St. Gabriel College student starts a GoFundMe page for an Afghan refugee. I'm sure you can list even many, many more. God knows all of us. God has called each of us to specific and unique tasks. God will supply everything we need to fulfill our callings. Now you say, well, yeah, that's not for me, Linda. Maybe. You may say, well, that's, that's just too easy. No, yeah, maybe. Maybe it is, maybe it is Pollyanna. And I believe it. I believe that God does provide. My life tells me that is true. And we have to do our part. I have to do my part. I have to be willing to step out and step up to God's call. And that may be easy when things are going good. When life is tough as it is right now, it's much more difficult to believe and act out in faith. The people to whom Jeremiah preached were experiencing difficulties. Their lives had taken a disastrous turn. They didn't know up from down. They didn't know who they were anymore. What was Jeremiah's message to those displaced and devastated people? The message was that while the people's location, they were in captivity, while the people's location had changed, their calling had not. They were still called to be God's people. Circumstances had changed, yes. And the world looked terribly, dreadfully, drastically different, but they still were called to be God's people. Our world, our world has looked terribly, dreadfully, and drastically different in these last two years. We are not all in the pews anymore. We don't have the same programs we used to. People are sick and dying. Opinions on just about everything are heightened by ridicule. Life is very different and disorienting. And, and I say that with capital letters, and we are still God's beloved. Called to be, as St. Paul says, the greatest of all, which is love. Love, love, love in this crazy, crazy and unpredictable world. We are all known and beloved of God. We're all called by God to specific tasks, regardless of our circumstances. God will supply every need to fulfill our calling. All of us 
have a part in the mosaic of ministry in this place. When one person does not exercise his or her gift for ministry, then our ministries are incomplete. God's work goes unfinished when any one of us refuses to heed God's call. We are so fortunate to have a multitude of ministry expressions in this congregation, in the ministry of Sunday school, in the ministry of stu study and exploration, the ministry of leadership, ministry of worship and music and prayer, the ministry of building and planting, the ministry of reaching out to the needs beyond this church. You can name all many more ministries as well. There is a place here for everyone everyone to offer their time, talent, and treasure. God's mission and ministry require nothing less than all, every single one of us, listening to, accepting, and acting on God's call. Being a Christian necessitates involvement, and now is the time. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with favor upon each of us as we renew our commitment to follow Christ and to serve in his name. Give us courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I think that all deserves just a moment of silence and thought and a little alleluia to Canon Linda. She brought it home. <laughs> All right, my dear friends, I ask you to join with me in proclaiming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty, ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. In the Anglican cycle of prayer today, we pray for the Church of the Providence of the Indian Ocean, and in our own diocese, we pray for the staff, 
the diocesan staff. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially for our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, our bishop, Diana Akiyama, and for our parish clergy, Canon Linda, Father Everett, Deacon Tom, and Deacon Roger, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present and on Zoom, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We pray for our community that all of St. Gabriel's will be a resource to our neighbors. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, and Kate, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Please join me in praying aloud for those in immediate need of healing prayer by bolded name. For George, Kat, Mona, the Tatue's family, Wally, Scott and Lily, Karen, Tom, Lonnie, Michelle, Lyman, Diana, Jeffrey, Gary, Bill, Micah, Ben and family, Lottie, Paul, Bishop Ladderhoff, Ian, Holly, Sherry, Hadley, Tim, Maddie, and Ellen. Are there others for whom we should pray this morning? Bless and fill me. And our turn. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Gabriel and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. This morning, especially remembering Ruth Schroeder and the Reverend Deacon Lucy Hauser and Moira Hughes. Are there others for whom we should pray this morning? Heather okay. Holly. Mm -hmm. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us now humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name, amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Now we have the prayer for our search process. Holy One, open our hearts and minds that we may discern your will. Grant us patience and perseverance as we wonder and wait for the one whom you send. We pray for a new rector 
who will help us embody the deep and unbounded love of Christ that is alive in our parish and community. Help the search committee to listen and respond with wisdom and gratitude each step of the way. Amen. And now we pray for our search committee members. We pray for God's wisdom and guidance for our search committee, remembering Joan, Ginger, Polly, Tom, Tim, Ian, and George. And now it's time for birthdays. Uh, let's see, can we take me off spotlight, uh, Susan? Or maybe I'm not on spotlight. There we go. Now I can see. Oh, we got two screen. We got two screens, so I may not be able to see everybody. But this morning's birthdays are Jean Dietzman, Tom Horgan, Clara Battles, Mary Higashi, Betsy Preble, Evelyn Frey, and Beckett. Oh my goodness, Yiak. And I apologize for destroying that last name if I did. Uh, let's see. Is there anyone on camera whose name I mentioned? or whose name I didn't mention, who's celebrating a birthday in this coming week. Sorry. Oh, Tom, you're on the second screen. Okay, Tom, you have to unmute so that you'll move, for the, move to the first screen for me. Hi, hi Father Everett. There you are. Okay, my friend. Okay, is there anyone else? I heard other voices. You come on. All right, well, Tom. Uh, she has a Ken beautiful Linda, wife here too. Ken and Linda has established the uh, a new tradition where you tell us where you were born and how, uh, what year you were born. Okay, I was born in Albany, New York, in 1958. So. 1958. Okay, everyone, start doing the math in your head. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let us pray for all the folks on our list and others who we may not know who are celebrating a birthday this week. And then, Tom, you hang out because we'll do a virtual blessing here. <laughs> Watch over thy children, Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, Tom, if we were fortunate enough to be able to gather together and you were here, I would ask you to come up so that I could anoint you. Um, I can't do that right now. But, dear Tom, may the Holy Spirit bless you in this coming year with love, companionship, and friendship, and continual growth in your love and work for the world and for Christ. Um, sorry, Tom, I just lost that, that blessing right there. Um, but may you find happiness and find friendship and know that you are loved and cared for by this family of St. Gabriel, who surrounds you and will continue to in the coming year. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. All right. Sorry, Tom, I dropped the football there a little bit in the middle, but it in no way, uh, in no way is an expression of the uh, esteem that I hold you in that I blub a little there. Um, anyway, my friend, happy birthday. Well, thank um, you. And now I don't have anyone listed for anniversaries, but is there anyone on Zoom? I have to swing my head around. Who's having an anniversary? Nope. Okay. Well, then we get to skip right over that part. Okay. Now, as you uh, probably know, I'm going to ask the people on Zoom, especially because there's no one but Ken and Linda and I here today, if you will please unmute for the piece. And I'm going to give you a second to do it because I love to hear the cacophony of voices, and I love saying the word cacophony. <laughs> All right, my dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And always, and always with you. With you. <laughs> peace. 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 <laughs> peace be with you, everyone. All right, you have to mute yourselves now, or Susan will do it for you. I appeal to you, friends, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, 
which is your spiritual worship. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, <clears throat> O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Because in the mystery of the world made flesh, Thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. For that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many 
for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according in the, to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, and all we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bound in duty and service, not weighing our merits, of pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I invite all of you on Zoom now to say with me this prayer of spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts, our souls, and our minds. We unite, we unite ourselves to you and embrace you with all the affections of our souls. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we join you in your reign of unending peace. Amen. Now let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that, that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, let us go forth in the name of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Boop. All right, everybody.